Okay, I think we look great. Hello. <laughs> it's nice to be here. <laughs> so I'm here at uh, Fantasy Con in beautiful Clydebank today at the Golden Jubilee uh, Hotel and I'm joined by award-winning horror author Priya Sharma. Priya. Hello. Um, you've come to Fantasy Con before, have you? I have. I first came to Fantasy Con in Peterborough a few years back mm -hmm. and really loved it. It was the first time I'd been among so many horror authors um, and I hadn't realised till that time actually how working in isolation is actually good for you. So it's lovely to be among <laughs> other writers, share ideas, really friendly bunch. So yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. It's great. I, I love it now. It's become a, a bit of a highlight of my year, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'm on holiday, but I'm meeting, meeting other writers and thinking about writing. I always come away invigorated. Mm -hmm. um, so you recently uh, came out with, was it your first collection? Um, yeah, all the, all the Fabulous Beasts. That, that was last year. That was last so, year. So yeah, 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 it was about um, 10, 12 years in the making. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So yeah. what can you tell us about that if people are interested in picking that book yeah, up? Yeah, it, it's for Undertow um, Publications. Um, they're Canada-based, um, they've got a really good track record. They've released work by um, VH Leslie, Georgina Bruce, um, Simon Stranza, um, and they've got very much their own sort of weird vibe. It's not pure horror. Um, I think they're doing something slightly different along the lines of unsung press in the um, unsung stories in the UK. If you know them, I mean, my collection itself is um, it's funny because I think it's about 50% of my work. But Mike Kelly, the editor there, has been very careful about curating it. And actually, it wasn't until I saw the, the stories all together that I realised actually there's quite a lot of transformation, transformation stories. And I, um, I'm a GP by day, and I've got quite a, an interest in in kind of natural history as well and, and I think all of that shows all of that translates into the book and there was a lot of um, a lot of family history and um, family um, dynamic stories in there as well that I, I seem to return to that as a theme mm. until I saw them all together I didn't realise I did that mm -hmm. so. and what about the title All the Fabulous Beasts I mean is that indicative of a theme are there are plenty of beasts yeah definitely there's plenty of beasts um, I mean, I, I've kind of got my own take on a mermaid tale in there, which um, it's not your straightforward story. Mm. It's not a, a typical kind of thing. It's, your, it's kind of your after the fairy tale type of story. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, a story in there called The Crow Palace, which is about corvids um, that originally appeared in an Alan Datlow anthology of original stories. Mm -hmm. um, what are corvids? Sorry. Corvids, it's, your, it's, it's a kind of... Um, a subspecies of, of, if you look at the bird taxonomy mm -hmm. thing, in the corvids you've got things like ravens, um, jays, um, rooks, mm. crows, all scavengers, all very intelligent. I mean, th that story is based on um, a news report about a, a little girl in the US who would leave out food for, for the birds and every day the crows knew what time she'd be there. Mm -hmm. They'd come and feed, but they'd leave her gifts. So she'd come out and she'd find little trinkets, bits of jewellery, screws, um, and kind of develop quite a strong relationship with them. Mm -hmm. um, and that fascinated me. And, I, you know, um, yeah, I, I do like the covers. I think they're quite a... Um, they are big bruisers with massive beaks and they're quite, you know... Um, they're quite, um, quite canny animals, really. Mm -hmm. They are smart. So um, there's also seahorses. I've got a bit of a fascination with seahorses, yeah. and there's a whole story about kind of birth in that. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Snakes, very much in Fabulous Beast, which was the, the title story. Mm -hmm. um, again, I have a, 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 an absolute fear, abject fear of snakes. But actually, as you, if you read about them and study them um, physiologically, they are absolutely fascinating creatures mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. the, the anatomy of them is amazing um, so it's kind of my exploration of, of those things really mm -hmm. uh, and I, I presume you spend a lot of time researching old myth mythical creatures or or existing yeah it, it's, it's not necessarily mythical creatures but I think um, I mean I, I spoke to I mean I was very lucky for the Crow Palace there's a um, one of my partners um, clients he's a gardener mm. she's a, an ornithologist and she takes people all over the world on these tours absolute fascination with with birds and I spent a couple of hours with her just sitting and drinking and talking um, read a lot of books the whole snake thing I was very lucky in that um, there was a really terrific exhibition on um, at the World Museum in Liverpool about reptiles and there's also the um, Tropical School of Medicine in Liverpool and it's quite important because they do a lot of um, work around um, venom antidotes mm -hmm. 
So I spoke to people there as well, mm -hmm. and they actually have, you know, a, a whole floor of dangerous snakes. And one of the cowits is, is a handler for them. You know, she's a herpetologist. Um, so I, I do do a lot of background because I find that it informs what I write. It actually helps inform plots mm -hmm. as well as language and detail. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's that. I, I love that. I'm a bit geeky, so mm -hmm. it's a bit. It's part of my process, really. Mm -hmm. There's an entire subgenre of horror, which you could call. Uh, you know, monster stories. Yeah. Would you would it annoy you to be for to see your stories described as monster stories? No, I, I, do you know what people can describe it any way they like. Mm. I'm not precious at all. Mm -hmm. um, I hope they're not traditional monster stories. Not that I don't love a good monster mm -hmm. story. I've got no prejudices about that at all. Um, yeah. No, I, I don't. I don't balk at any title really. I think people take or interpret what you write anyway. I'm not very good at labels, and I don't think what I write is typical of any genre anyway mm -hmm. um, you know maybe it falls into the kind of the weird fiction umbrella I don't know there's monsters in them but normally they're people anyway mm. I find people more monstrous than animals of course yeah. so you know mm -hmm. um, and you've got a new novella as well I do it's um, from Tor it, um, it's called Orm Shadow it's, it's quite different um, to my collection mm -hmm. it's um, kind of Historical fantasy, some people have described it as quite bleak, but, um, you know, it's, it's all, I mean, I, I grew up in um, urb, a kind of an urban place, but very close to the countryside, and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of my childhood memories about kind of nature in, in a way that I feel divorced from it in, a, in an adult have come out there, you know, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I am quite, there's a little bit of nostalgia, I think, for mm -hmm. my part in it as well. Um, and I'm quite, I've always been quite interested in, in writers like Thomas Hardy, so I think that shows in it as well. You know, I, I remember reading um, The Mayor of Casterbridge in my early teens, and, and then kind of it fell into all his other novels, and I think that left quite a big impression on me. So mm -hmm. there's some of that in there, mm -hmm. definitely. So the title again is? It's Orm Shadow. Orm Shadow. Um, that's available now? It's available now. And uh, All the Fabulous Beasts? Yeah. Of course, is uh, is widely available and yes. worth checking out. Um, Priya Sharma, thank you very much. Thank you very much.